second one you sent me is one I know you know very well. Uh, it's called Seeking Alpha. Uh, maybe you could speak mm. to that. Right. Yeah. In my opinion, Seeking Alpha is a great resource and it's getting better with time. It looks like the management and the people in charge of Seeking Alpha are trying to improve their service and it's slowly showing results. Before I dive into Seeking Alpha though, I should mention I write for them. So technically that means they pay me. It's not very much. Uh, whenever I write a report, they will pay me a little bit and I should just disclose that because some people might just want to discredit everything. I say about Seeking Alpha because of that. And I would also say like Morningstar, while a lot of their stuff is free, some of their stuff isn't. So you can pay for better access to certain features, but we'll just focus uh, on the free stuff for today and on the free side of their platform. Okay, yeah, good, uh, good disclosures there. I appreciate that. Um, and if people want to find you on Seeking Alpha, what's the best way to do that? They can type in my name, Philip McKellar, and I'll pop up. And I try to write once a month. I'm not anything like as frequent a writer as some of the people on that platform. And honestly, while I try to write once a month, sometimes it just doesn't happen. Some things come up and sometimes it slips to, slips to writing once every two months, for example. It's difficult to write uh, publicly that often. Uh, it's, yeah, it's a big undertaking. So. Yeah. Uh, what else do you like about Seeking Alpha then? I mean, wh where do you find the value uh, in their platform? Well, there are a few features that I really like. The first is that their portfolio and watch list tools are great. You can insert, say, 10 or 12 companies that you're interested in. You can sign up for email alerts. You can build a watch list in a portfolio with those companies. And each day in your inbox or once a week or however often you schedule it, you will get email updates which detail the latest company news, the latest earnings, important SEC filings, and you will see what other analysts or investors are thinking about that company because you'll also get the analyst report. So for me, it's a great way to stay on top of the news flow, helps me see what other investors are thinking, and just stay up to date with the companies that I've either invested in or the companies that I'm interested in owning. What about uh, the earnings transcripts? I like how those land in my inbox and the... Um... In the daily news and latest analysis, is that something you find value mm -hmm. in? or? Yeah, that's an excellent point. The, I would say they're seeking alpha. The, the earnings transcripts are wonderful. I really like them. I used to be one of those people who would listen to conference calls all the time, and it's just slow and it's tedious. So those seeking alpha transcripts have saved me because it's so much easier to read through them. It's so much faster. And you can still get all the information you need just by reading the transcript. So I find that's a, a great service. And I would also say, hand in hand with the transcript service that Seeking Alpha has, the quarterly data that they provide as to if a company's beaten expectations or missed expectations is also very good. And you can scroll through that and you can see if a company always disappoints the street or if the company is always outperforming. And that's great data to have on hand too. No kidding. Yeah, that's, uh, that's very valuable information. Um, any other features that really stand out for you? Or? Uh, the financial statements are pretty good on Seeking Alpha. I would say Morningstar, just for me personally, I find Morningstar's format a bit easier to digest. But that's not to say that Seeking Alpha has bad financial statements. I think they're pretty good. The company overview page is really useful as well. So you can go in there and you can look and just read about what the company actually does, what sector it's in, how many employees it has, that sort of thing. And then it also has fairly good historic trading data where you can go through and you can see on a day-by-day -day basis either where the stock opened, where it finished, and how high or low it oscillated during that day. And all three of those features are pretty good for Seeking Alpha. Sounds like it's a pretty well-rounded resource overall. Um, any shortcomings with their free service that you'd mention? Yeah, I guess every website has shortcomings and they're no exception. The biggest one is that as a Canadian investor, they don't actually provide Canadian symbols and Morningstar does. So Morningstar has them beat there. Um, for example, if I type in RioCan to uh, Morningstar, I can type in REI.UN and that's the tr symbol it's traded under. For Seeking Alpha, I have to type in RioCan and it will come up with a symbol RIOCF, which you know doesn't, doesn't make much sense. It's just not what it trades under. So there they have them beat. I would also say that the peer comparison tab for Seeking Alpha often doesn't make sense to me. So the 
example I can talk about is I recently wrote about a company, Hibbit, which is a retailer in the United States, and they're a shoe retailer. So they sell a lot of Nike and Adidas products. So their closest peers are Dick's Sporting Goods and Foot Locker and Shoe Carnival, that sort of company. But instead, if you go to the uh, peer comparison tool on um, Seeking Alpha, you'll get a Halloween party store and a boat retailer or a yacht retailer and an outdoor camping store and a strange storage product store is the peer group that they're comparing to. And, you know, it's it's kind of funny. Uh, I find it kind of funny because it's so obviously not the peer group they should be compared to. But that's the, the that's the way Seeking Alpha has done it so far. And hopefully they change that in the future, but I'm not going to hold my breath for it. Yeah, it's odd. Um, I've seen some strange comparisons myself, but uh, all in all, it seems like a good service, uh, certainly as a free service, um, with a little bit of room mm -hmm. for improvement, perhaps. 